Good morning. Well, it's Sunday morning here on uh, the 24th of January is what it is. And I hope everybody's doing okay. Just a short video this morning from my YouTube channel. And uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when uh, someone is faced with the truth uh, about something they believe and are uh, reach a, a little bit of a crisis. Uh, not always a little bit of a crisis. Could be a great crisis. They could have a crisis of faith in something that they've uh, poured their whole life into and realize that it's false. And yet, a cognitive dissonance is the rejection of the facts in favor of whatever it is that they've believed for uh, a period of time, maybe their whole lives. So we see this all the time and we're guilty of it ourselves uh, on to one degree or another. And so cognitive dissonance will, I can give you some examples of that. Uh, things in the world will flip-flop. And so uh, you, you start out, say, things with, a, with your diet. Uh, when I was a kid, eggs were going to kill you. They were full of cholesterol and and you didn't dare eat the yolk. And uh, uh, early on, I would just eat uh, egg whites. If you ate the whites, you're okay. But if you ate the yolks, that was... And now they're finding out that eggs are actually good for you. And so then there was the big thing was the low-fat diet. You got to have a low-fat diet. Now they're finding out that fat's good for you. <laughs> and it's the carbohydrates that are the, the booger bear. And sugar, of course, is... Uh, was okay for a while and now now sugar's not very good and salt was bad it was going to have us blow up with a, a stroke or a heart attack and now they're finding out that you need some sodium in your diet and so salt's not so bad uh it goes on and on and these diet uh trends and and uh fads that that have uh taken place they come and they go and and people change their mind and and uh even though confronted with the evidence people still have a low-fat diet <laughs> so this there's a cognitive dissonance you see well here's here's the fact of the matter is is that well fat is good for your brain fat's good for your muscles fat gives you energy and they can provide a very good argument for uh, good healthy fat but uh, the low-fat practitioner says oh no we can't do that. We're going to get all clogged arteries and then on it goes like that. So that's that's kind of a good example of cognitive dissonance. Uh, I could make, uh, uh, I hear that people are getting banned for from uh, YouTube or censored or whatever for using certain uh, certain topics that are a little sensitive these days. And so uh, maybe we'll tread a little lightly with that. I just want to preach the gospel on these stations mostly. That's the thing, but you can give a good illustration. So if uh, wearing a certain article of clothing is supposed to be uh, keeping you safe, and and uh, I'm just going to... How does wearing a surgical mask in a windstorm outside make you safe? <laughs> Say, hey, man, you're outside. The wind's blowing. How are you going to get any kind of an illness in that situation? But the cognitive dissonance reigns supreme in some people because they'll say, oh, I just got to, this is what we're told to do, and so this is what we must do, and I'll, I'm just going to be safe. So we drive around in a vehicle with a mask on. So that's cognitive dissonance. All right. Well, it's just harmless. It's not going to hurt you. I mean, you know, help yourself if that's what you want to do. Uh, so let's make the leap over to the religious, uh, society or community and, uh, we'll get a little cognitive dissonance, which is far more deadly actually than, uh, a lot of the stuff that goes on today. You grow up in a certain church. I'm not, not any particular church. You grow up in a certain church and they teach you to do certain things in order that in order to go to heaven. 
if you want to go to heaven, this is what you got to do. You got to be in church every Sunday. You got to be in church. If you're not in church, if you don't go to church, you know, you're in trouble. The Lord will get you. If you're not uh, adhering to our code of ethics or our code of conduct or our interpretation of the Bible, which is, uh, I talked about this on my live Facebook feed, interpretation. Interpretations will kill you. You got to go by what the Bible says. You know, anybody can interpret things a certain way. So uh, if you're not adhering to our doctrine in this church, you are doomed. That's, and so a, a child is brought up in that kind of a system. And then what happens is, is they get it ingrained in them. And then somebody comes along and tells them, hey, uh, Jesus Christ loved you enough to die for you. And all you have to do is trust him. You don't have to go to church to be saved. You don't have to quit this or quit that. And you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. You don't have to get baptized. And in fact, you shouldn't do these things in order to be saved because you won't get saved if you do. You just receive a person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again according to the Scriptures. And so the person joyfully uh, receives Jesus Christ and gets gloriously saved. But there's all this extra poison from the from the upbringing, mostly from the uh, childhood or whatever, that says, "Hey, I, I've got to go to church. Hey, I've I've got to be good." Or, or, you know, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better not shout. You better not pout. You better not cry. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. And we, I remember that from being five years old, six years old. We all sung that as little children, right? And that's the threat. That's Santa Claus will get you if you don't be good for goodness sake. Hey, man, you can't be good. <laughs> There's none good. No, not one. That's cognitive dissonance. See? So junk that. <laughs> and trust what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. He loved you enough to die for you. And uh, you, by grace, you can, you can be saved and saved forever. And by grace, you can live the Christian life by his faith and by his power by his grace uh, you can live the life uh, for him and with him walk in the spirit and not and not fulfill the lust of the flesh so that's a few thoughts for this morning i hope you're all doing okay i hope everybody within the sound of my voice is saved saved for sure and uh what I want to do is keep the cognitive dissonance in my own life down to a dull roar, man. <laughs> if the Bible uh, refutes it, go with the Bible. Whatever it is that you might happen to believe. If, uh, if whatever it is that you happen to believe disagrees with the Scripture, bring every, every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Never mind what you always were taught, what you always believed, what you're too scared to, to uh, think. Hey, the Lord said, fear not. I am the first and the last. Trust Jesus Christ for your eternity, for your soul, for your salvation, but also after that, after you get saved. All right. Well, I wish you a good day. Talk to you later.